We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories. And Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. Our journey continues through gridiron history as we talk about one of the most interesting people from the football past. This edition, we cover the career of a champion and record-setting running back, Steve Van Buren. His story is coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of PigskinDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pigpen, your portal to positive football history. And we're going to look into that portal of positive history and look at another great Hall of Famer in our series where we're trying to cover as many of these great legends of the game as we possibly can. And today's topic is what I call the Hall of Fame halfback from Honduras, Steve Van Buren. Now, a story from a pretty neat book called Tales from the Philadelphia Eagles Sideline, which is a collection of the greatest Eagle stories ever told, is by author Gordon Forbes. And this book is exactly as the cover title suggests. It tells the Philadelphia pro football tales about the players and the game situations throughout history in you know, a very in-depth look at each of them. And an article in this book really inspired me to recant the tale of a legendary Eagles player, Steve Van Buren. Now, he was one of the hardest hitting men in all of football in the late to mid 1940s. Now, Steve was born in La Ciba, Honduras, to a father that was American and a Latino mother. His parents tragically both died when he was about 10 years old, and then the orphan was sent to live with relatives in the United States near New Orleans. Now, it is then when he was stateside that he became familiar with and intrigued with the game of football. As a 10th grader, he tried out for the local Warren Easton High School gridiron team, but did not make the cut that year. Disappointed and struggling in his studies, that same year he dropped out of school to pursue work at a local foundry uh, where they poured iron. Now, a couple of years later of doing that, uh, he wisely returned to his studies in high school and played football in his senior season as a two-way end. Well, that one season, he was so sensational, and it made all the difference as Van Buren soon found himself attending LSU on a football scholarship to play the sport. Now, he was usually... Uh, used as mainly a blocking back for the Tigers in his first few seasons. And it was during his senior year at the college that his coach, Bernie Moore, moved him to the feature tailback slot because many of the backs had enlisted to fight in World War II and weren't available. While Van Buren himself could not join the service because of an eye defect, and uh, thus he was exempt from active duty. So Coach Moore would later recall how fans in Baton Rouge gave him the business for not running this Van Buren kid earlier than his final collegiate season at the school. Now the player was a great rusher, and even though he had been an outstanding blocker as well. Well, he decided to become pro and he had the opportunity to, so the Philadelphia Eagles drafted Steve with the fifth overall selection of the 1944 NFL Draft while he was still a student in LSU. In 1945, Van Buren rewarded the Eagles for their choice by leading the NFL in rushing yards for the first time, and he also led the league in scoring and yards from scrimmage and kickoff return yards. 
He also set a franchise record at the time with 15 rushing touchdowns scored on the season, which stood the test of time all the way until 2011 when it was broken. He also broke Don Hudson's great wide receiver from the Green Bay Packers total touchdown record at the time set just a few years earlier in the early 1940s when Van Buren reached a pager a total of 18 times during the 1945 season. In 1947, that saw another outstanding performance by the young running back. He started a three-year run where he again led all NFL rushers in yardage and set a new league record when he registered 1,007 yards on the ground for the 1947 season, eclipsing the previous record of 1,004 set by Beatty Feathers of the Chicago Bears all the way back in 1934. Now, Philadelphia made it to the NFL title game, but they lost to the Chicago Cardinals that year and their million-dollar backfield. The next season, the Eagles made it all the way to the NFL Championship game again, as Van Buren again led all NFL rushers in multiple categories. And at the 1948 NFL Championship game, it was played in a blizzard at Philadelphia's Scheib Park. Now, Steve Van Buren ended up being the star of the game, but he almost missed playing in the game at all. Now, thinking the game would not be played in the blizzard, he remained home until the Eagles coach, Greasy Neal, telephoned him looking for a star running back and told him, hey, the game's still on despite the weather. Now, he had to catch three trolleys and walk six blocks in order to make the game on time. And Van Buren later exclaimed, I looked out my bedroom window in the morning and saw the snow, so I went back to bed. I was sure the game would be postponed, end quote. Now, Philly was lucky that he did make it as he posted the game's only score on a fourth quarter rushing touchdown from five yards up. The 7-0 win gave the Eagles their first league title as Van Buren finished the day with 98 yards rushing on 26 carries. The following year, 1949, the Eagles repeated with yet another trip to the championship game. This time they traveled to LA to play the Rams on a very muddy field. Now Van Buren failed to score in the game, but he accounted for 196 yards of offense on the sloppy track, setting a record as the Eagles blanked LA 14 to nothing to win a second consecutive championship of the NFL. As the new decade in the 1950s rolled in, Van Buren suffered from a rash of multiple injuries that slowed his productivity considerably and eventually forced him to retire uh, during 1951. And uh, Van Buren uh, soon joined the coaching ranks in some of the minor pro circuit teams, uh, you know, like the Continental League and, and some others uh, on the East Coast, in the Atlantic Coast. Uh, but in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, honored him with enshrinement in 1965 as a player. Great player, Steve Van Buren, that he was. Hope you enjoyed this little bit of history. Hope you'll enjoy it each and every day as we bring you some more tidbits and great information, stories from football from yesteryear. Hope to see you at the same time tomorrow as we bring you some more great football history. And until then, have a great Gridiron Day. Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. A special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. offices of the Pittsburgh Guardian newspaper circa 1924. But for Marla Delft, assistant editor, everything was about to change. For she was about to discover the awesome attractiveness of Row 1 brand retro sports paraphernalia items thanks to Orville Mulligan, sports writer. And there it is. Wow, Orville, that's really the bee's knees. Isn't it just? A poster-sized replica of the actual 1909 World Series program cover. I can see that. But where did you get it? And where'd you get it framed? I ordered it from the Row 1 website. 
where over 6,000 items of sports memorabilia from the 1880s to the 1990s are available for reproduction in multiple sizes and in several different materials with over a dozen styles of frame to choose from for prints like this. Well, I'm sure Mr. Delft would love to put up more of these in the office. But I'm equally as sure they're beyond this newspaper's budget. <laughs> Not at all, my dear Marla. See for yourself. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. Oh my, these are good prices. Oh, and look at this stuff. Oklahoma, Nebraska football. College basketball art. Michael Jordan items. And so Retro it was that Marla Delft discovered the spondiferous magic of Row One Sports memorabilia arts and prints. You can too by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one. That's R O W number one today for access to the full Row One catalog of gallery prints and gifts like t shirts, long sleeve shirts, telephone cases, coffee mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Act A for a 15% discount off all prints with coupon code SHN15 and 20% off all other items with coupon code SHN20 at checkout. And keep your dial locked to the Sports History Network for the exciting chronicles of the 1920 sports world in Orville Mulligan, sports writer, coming soon. Oh,